All right, now before we get too far into tools and subtools and all sorts of fancy sculpting stuff we can do in ZBrush, I know this isn't exactly the fun stuff just yet. We're really close. And actually, this is, a, this is kind of fun. I take that back. So we'll talk about primitives while we have a primitive up on our screen. We'll talk a little bit about navigation with that primitive, and we can just kind of practice as we manipulate what's on our screen. So again, we have a tool selected, and that tool right now happens to be our primitive. Now, how do I know it's a primitive? If you go to your tool palette here, you're going to see we went through here and we clicked a cube, and that was under 3D meshes. These are just primitives. Now, what is the difference between a primitive and like just something we can just import or sculpt on? Because uh, remember, if we just click on this, it's going to tell you to make a poly mesh 3D button. So a poly mesh 3D is different than a primitive. And how they're different is if we have a primitive selected, number one, primitives in general have a different menu system than a poly mesh 3D. Essentially, a primitive, if we go down here to initialize, is just a starting point. So in other 3D programs, you can like say make a cube and you can tell it how many spans you want it and stuff like that. In ZBrush, you can say, hey, make me a primitive cube, put it on my canvas so I can so I can go through and manipulate it here. But also what I can do is go down here to initialize and I can change the X and Z size. So X, Y, and Z, so we can shrink it down in the X, Y, and Z axis, as well as we can add a twist here. So we can actually twist this cube if we want to. We can have however many H divides we want, however many V divides we want. And those are horizontal and vertical divides. So we can set up this primitive how we want before we decide to start like sculpting on it or demodeling or you know extruding faces on it. And the cool thing is there's a lot of really cool primitives in here. So we click on this palette here and we say we go from a cube to say a cylinder. We haven't lost the cube, the cube's still here. So if you went through the file handling video, you're gonna see we're just still in the tool palettes right here. And we have our cylinder primitive and our cube primitive that we made. And you're actually gonna see cube 3D1. If you already have a cube, primitive sitting here and you make another one it'll just make a cube 3d one here's a cylinder 3d if we go up here and i think if we go back to our cube 3d one and then we make another cylinder 3d oh it just goes back to our cylinder 3d so once we start making poly meshes you might start seeing naming conventions up here with one twos and threes i'll get to that when we when we start seeing that but for now we have a cylinder selected we can go down here to initialize again change the x y and z size if you want to skinny this out you can you can change the H divide. You can also taper the top if you want to and taper it into a cone. You can also add uh, cap subdivisions by changing this ratio slider here. And these are just really basic primitives, but there are really complex primitives in here. So the cone's pretty self-explanatory. Ring, self-explanatory. The sweep profile's uh, an interesting one. This is a profile curve. So you're gonna see in my menu here, under initialize, we actually have two of these type of options available to us. And what's cool is you can click on this and now we have a curve area available to us. So this, let's talk about how to manipulate curves within the ZBrush interface within a sub menu. So what you can do is you can see this profile right here matches our profile of our primitive right here. So if we take this orange dot and we pull it in, it's going to match that profile to our object. And we can go in here and we can rotate around. So you can see this is updating on the fly. Now, if we want to add another dot, all you got to do is click and drag. And then here's another dot. You can click and drag here and make another dot here. And you're going to see when we select any of these dots, there's going to be a yellow ring around it. If you want to, you can pull this out here. You're going to see how it's kind of a bezier curve. If you take this ring, you can actually sharpen that. You can go from kind of a blobby bezier curve to a sharp curve here. So you can go through here and you can sharpen all these up. And if you want to switch it from a curve to a corner point, what you can do is you can see this is a curve point right here. If we take this and we drag off and then drag back on without letting up, here it's going to switch from a curve to a point, and then if we drag off and then drag back on again, it's going to go from a point to a curve. So if you want to make all these points, you can go through here and just drag all these on and off, and now they are harsh points here. So now we're making a different profile here, and it's updating on the fly with our because it's creating a sweep of this profile to make a 3D object. If you want to remove any dots, all you can do is you can just click and drag off, and then instead of dragging back on, just just let go. And that'll go ahead and get rid of these. So now we can make this point. If we want to turn this back into a curve, drag off and then drag back on. And now we can add, kind of soften that curve out a little bit. There's more options available to us, what we'll get into later. But that's essentially how you manipulate curves within ZBrush, at least in the interface. There's another option in ZBrush for manipulating curves as a brush. That's something different. Going back up here, there's Terrain, which is similar to Sweet Profile. You can play around with that one. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Helix is another cool one that we use a lot for creating things like coils and springs. Uh, gear 3D is another really interesting one. So it's kind of just a weird gear shape. And if you go down here again to initialize here, you can change the width. So how fat 
the gear here is. You can change the interior radius, eye radius here, the inner radius. You can skew, tilt, and that kind of just like wraps it inside of itself. That's kind of neat. So feel free to play with any of these options within ZBrush as far as the primitives. You can come up with really cool shapes. Uh, and if you just want to start out simple, all you got to do is grab a cube, grab a cylinder, grab a sphere, and just start there. But I wanted to run you through the primitive process since we were talking about primitives. Uh, you're going to notice when I click hit simple brush, it's asking me if I want to switch and kind of drop this on the canvas. Essentially what it's telling me is since the simple brush is a 2.5D brush, it's just a brush where I can kind of paint on the canvas, it essentially wants to drop my object on the canvas. So if I say switch, now I'm in paint mode and now I'm just painting. And you're going to see I can paint uh, on my object, but I can't rotate anymore because when I click and drag, it's just painting, it's not rotating. That object has been dropped to my canvas and now is just 2.5D information. I didn't lose anything, I still have it sitting over here in my palette here, so if I want to bring it back, what I can do is hit Control N to clear my canvas, click that gear we were messing with, drag it out on my canvas, go into edit mode, and now we're back to rotating and setting up our initialized primitives here. However, if you ever click on a simple brush or a 2.5D brush, it's going to ask if you want to switch, if you do switch, it essentially drops it on your canvas. Another way to drop your object on your canvas, you're in here rotating, you're in edit mode. If you ever go out of edit mode or hit T accidentally, it's going to essentially drop your object on your canvas. So now you can drag another version out, drag another version out, drag another version out. You can keep dragging versions of your object out. If you don't like that, hit Control N to clear your canvas, drag your object out, and go in back into edit mode. Another thing you can do, and I bring that up because a lot of people sometimes hit T accidentally, and then they drag, and they're like, oh my god, what did I do? How do I fix this? Why is it doing this? All it's doing is it took you out of edit mode. So now you can go back into edit mode. You can rotate around your object. You can continue initializing. Now, however, you have all of this dropped object on your canvas here. It kind of gets in the way. Hit Control N. That clears your canvas, and you can continue working.